In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to use a Kangaroo and Moveabed plugin for Rhino Grasshopper. I'll first show you how to use a Kangaroo to simulate basic tensile structure. Then we'll use a Moveabed to subdivide the mesh and control the aperture by implementing a basic distance to point function. The color of mesh also reacts to the size of openings. Let's begin the session. First, we need to define the region, so I'm going to go ahead and type rectangle. And we need to give a size x and y, but this time I'm going to use construct domain to equally spacing x and y. Put that to x and y, and I'll give 100 in terms of going x direction and x reverse direction and y and y reverse direction. And we need to go and edit the expression of the first dot domain, type minus x. I'll give it somewhere around 58 for now. So next we'll need to change that into a mesh, so type mesh plane and give somewhere around 20 for width and height. Then next we'll have to mesh corner. So that will define four edge for where we're gonna anchor this mesh into. Next we'll have to apply some sort of gravity like strength so type vertex lows so this will grab every single vertices in the mesh and give them some sort of apply some sort of physics to those vertices so type no point not 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 as arbitrary starting point so that will give some sort of anchor point and also give every single vertex some sort of physics so next i'm going to type anchor you can you can also find that under Kangaroo 2. Here is the location. And next, I will define the length of the edge, type edge length. So we'll, um, I'll give it somewhere around 0 0.5 for the length factor. And that grabs the, the length of the, the edge, mesh of the mesh edge in the midpoint. And then next, I will type naked vertices. This will show you and immediately select the, uh, the vertices of the mesh. If I just show you, so type data. If I connect that to close points, that will select everything in the middle. If I connect that to naked points, it will get everything on the outskirt. So next I'll um, put arbitrary two points. We'll, we'll pull these points, vertices towards these two points. I'm going to create these two points here and there. And I'm going to type point to contain these two points. And there you go, select the point. And next I will type closest point. So which will then select the point on the, um, on the close points to the points that is situated in the in the x and y axis so so it will pull the vertices to towards those two points so i'm going to type anchor and the points has to be all the points that you can get and also the target is those two points that we just created let's go ahead and type solver and solver and you can find the solver under main tool as well and next we'll have to show the mesh so type show that will show status of the original mesh and then they will change and simulate and you can see how the mesh changes and go ahead plug all these four things that we just created so I start from then as you can see that these are started behaving like actual tensile structure so let's give other functions so you should be able to reset that type button and second you will be able to also control whether the solver works or not by using boolean toggle so connect toggle to on there you go okay so as as i can see um we only selected one point so we need to go and amend that so down and select these two points there you go and select it two points so these two are acting as a as a as a target points. Let's go ahead and hide all the uh, all the other 
components and it will they will leave us with a very clean mesh uh, tensile structure so next i'll uh, turn that to false and then uh, if i just undo the um, the anchors that we created previously and I'll, if i show you it will create a rather quite nice arch structure but as soon as you plug those two points back in it will immediately give you those those two anchor points so it depends on how you play with it and you can actually control this with a very simple manner so next um, what i'm going to show you is that how to subdivide the mesh so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use exploit tree to exploit all the mesh and connect that to mesh exploit the mesh then that will type mesh to grab just the mesh out of those data tree so now we're not going to get all the vertices that has been created from the solver so next is that we're going to go under mesh mesh explode uh, mesh explode is another you can find another component mesh component in food for rhino I'll, I'll put that in my description where to grab them as well and go ahead grab area we just need to get the centroid if you go to riverbed you'll see there are two types of triangular subdivisions worst the first one is that leaves the one loss in a triangle empty and the second a triangle subdivision is you subdivide how, how deep you want to go in you can control that by level so we're going to use the second triangle subdivision so we're going to use a attractor point so this time we're going to use we're going to create another point and type point and assign assign the uh, the point to the uh, point pram so again so we're going to use create a simple distance function so type distance so that will calculate the distance between the point to the uh, center of the mesh and we're going to remap the uh, the value and that will go into value and we'll have to test the uh, how how this subdivision works so i'm going to go ahead and create uh, the slider and just to see how, how many subdivisions we're going to get with this subdivision tool and i want to visualize the mesh so i'm going to go ahead grab mesh edge and okay so as you can see one gives you quite generous triangle and if we go all the way up to four it's rather quite dense triangular shape so i would say we don't go over level five so we can remap the um, the value from one to one to five max five so if if it goes above five the triangular shape goes too small so that really don't get much of the aperture at all so i'm going to go ahead and create a domain type domain construct domain and i'll define starting point one and end point five that goes to target and i'll get bounds they will get the um so if you check whether that's been flattened yes it is flattened that goes to source and if you type if you go and get the map that has been remapped quite nicely from one to five and i want to round that to get near number so if you get grab nearest and go ahead and type to level all right it's subdivided the whole thing there's one thing that we'll have to do we'll have to graph this information however the graph does only work in the beginning so i'll go back to have to we'll have to graph the uh, the mesh so i'll go back to mesh explode and i'll graph that all up so as you can see that has been nicely um that's been nicely sorted and we'll have to flatten the bounds there you go so that's 
take at this distance function works with the subdivision so as it gets further from the center point from the point you will get more dense subdivision next we will create aperture so go and transform grab with a bird openings picture frame and go ahead and click triangle subdivision to mesh poly polylines and as you can see it's all same offset so let's use the uh, the distance control uh, the distance function uh, again and just grab them all and duplicate that and what we want to do again so we'll have to define the size of this opening but we need to know how far that goes this time if it gets close to the point i want the opening size smaller which means that we just need to swap those two domain the other way around so by swapping these two slider as you can see five doesn't do much and even though it gets 10 it still seems quite small so what i'll do i will edit those two slider maximum number 30 and minimum number all the way up to probably somewhere around three will do i grab the bump that up all the way three and go all the way up to 30. as you can see that the center point gets a smaller aperture and it will get, if you get away from that you'll get a wider aperture um, here you go so if you initiate the uh, grasshopper kangaroo you'll get the tensile structure works perfectly fine next we're going to color this and we'll use the same relationship uh, from the, the size of the aperture and let's grab gradient we'll define the color so the so you choose you choose anything that you prefer i'm gonna use three or four points and grab somewhere around the bottom make it red and orange and that gives a nice variation i'm gonna make it the last one white there you go that's rather quite nice spread so we know where to grab what and we'll have to deconstruct the domain from where we grab them and it could be it could be that it could be round so let's deconstruct it first type deconstruct Go ahead and get the grab and split that start and end and the parameter goes to distance that goes to color so now and we'll probably have to turn off all the preview of those two previous mesh that's been wide that's been nicely um, applied so if you move the two points and it reacts to those two points and if you move that point again to left to create an interesting shape it does change that it does adopt that to new point target points you can stretch as far as you want and get right back to where it is and you can control the aperture and size as you want so this is it i hope you enjoyed it and see you next time